Okay, I think we're live. Um, hello to anybody uh, watching, or indeed if anybody is uh, watching. Um, my name is uh, Andrew Keats. Uh, I'm a theatre director. Um, I'm the artistic director of uh, Arian Productions, which is a theatre company which is dedicated um, to giving opportunities from people to people from a social or an ethnic minority background through the work uh, that we do with our productions and indeed our events. Uh, I'm a producer. Uh, I'm the host of a, um, a podcast called uh, The Show People Podcast with Andrew Keats, where um, I sit down with all sorts of different uh, actors and creatives um, and we, uh, we chat about their lives and careers um, and try and have a little bit of fun at the same time. Um, and as well as that, what else is there? Um, obviously at the moment, uh, on the 1st of December, we've just, uh, we've just had World AIDS Day, um, and anybody that sort of, uh, follows me or, or knows about me knows that, um, uh, I'm a very big campaigner for raising awareness surrounding, um, the stigma, uh, that still exists for people living with HIV, um, and parts of the world which are still, uh, terribly affected by AIDS. Um, I've got a High King's Head Theatre. I've just had a lovely little uh, message there from Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Um, yes, yeah, so I, ha I have. King's Head's been great. They've given me a rather lovely breakdown of things I'm supposed to do. So, for once in my life, I'm going to be guided by somebody else. Um, first of all, thank you so much uh, to the King's Head for um, asking me to uh, to take part. This is really rather lovely. Um, and feels totally uh, like the King said that when faced with um, adversity they come up with something as lovely as this so, so we can all still connect as, as theatre makers. So thank you very much King's Head Theatre, it's lovely to be here even though I am of course in my own flat but, but hey I'd much rather be in your lovely auditorium. Um, I've been told to encourage people to ask questions and comment so um, this is me encouraging you to ask questions and comment. Uh, additionally, uh, I've been told I should sort of give it in like, sort of five minutes before we get going, just because it will give um, it'll give time for people to join in. Um, no doubt, uh, we are pinging all over people's notifications, so I don't want to start and then start um, uh, repeating myself. Um, but yes, uh, what. Do, uh, what have I been doing during lockdown? That's probably not a bad idea to start just before I get into career things. Um, what have I been doing? I, I've literally been um, taking a lot of this time to sort of uh, reconsider me, really. I know that sounds um, quite strange, but I, I, found, um, I found that this has been an amazing time to sort of pause um, and look at what I was doing in my life before this 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 global event and, and how I might be better um, and I found that you know with with theatre it's very easy to sort of fall into a lot of sort of awful showbiz stereotypes you know trying to get to you know the best parties and, and hang out with the most influential people and, and actually I found during this lockdown it's been a lovely time to sort of just go back and read old plays read brand new plays think about the artists that I really love to collaborate with or the ones I'd like to or ones that I did. Um, reconnecting with my family, reconnecting with um, with friends um, and just really looking at, at, at what is sort of vital to, to the work I want to be doing and the life I want to be leading that perhaps could be a little bit better uh, than what it was before, before lockdown. Um, I have no idea if anybody is watching this apart from Shardy. Maybe I should just call Shardy and have a, a lovely conversation on the phone instead. <laughs> um, if anybody is here, would anybody like to uh, ask me any questions just to get the ball rolling as I sip my very hot cup of Earl Grey tea? Gosh, these things are absolutely awful, aren't they? When you have to look at yourself, uh, I sort of want to put a big post-it note where my rather mousy looking face is. Uh, does anybody have a question? That's probably uh, a good place to start. Do you know what? I will go with one of these uh, early questions that's in the pack that I was sent. Um, what is my connection to the King's Head? Um, 
I, when I sort of started, uh, I was very, very fortunate. In fact, I had the best time of my life um, co-running uh, a fringe theatre called the Landor Theatre, which is uh, sadly no more. Um, nothing to do with me, I hasten to add. I mean, it closed many years after I left. Um, but I co-ran it with a wonderful man called Robert McCoy. Um, and it was in Clapham. And uh, by osmosis of, of running a fringe theatre, of course, I got to know uh, all of the various um, uh, fringe venues and people who ran them. Um, and the wonderful, and I do mean wonderful, um, Adam Sprebby Mayer and I, when we were much younger, um, uh, became friends. Um, we, we definitely chatted about doing a few plays. The, the King's Head is one of those theatres where I've always thought um, rent a crowd will be here soon. Well, I hope so, Simon. I hope so. Um, I'm giving up my lunch break for this, honestly. Not that I have anything else to do today. Um, anyway, uh, so I got to know Adam as uh, Preppy Mayor. Uh, and yes, uh, we, we chatted about doing plays. We never found one in the end. So, so Shadi, maybe um, you should make a note and think, oh, plays for Andrew Keats to direct. And I'd love to do something there. Um, and especially, uh, I, I've seen a lot of great work at the King's Head. Um, I really enjoy my time there. Um, I'm always massively impressed by the sort of extraordinary output of work, output of work that they do, particularly in regards to LGBTQ plus plays. Um, when it comes to certainly gay plays, that's something that I'm, I'm very much associated with. Um, indeed, at the tender age of, I think about 22, um, whilst running the land or sort of the play that, um, I hate to come up with these phrases, but that sort of put me on the map, whatever that means, or certainly did back then, uh, was a play called Bent um, by Martin Sherman, who is uh, a very, very important friend and, and, and figure in my life to this day. And um, yeah, d doing Bent sort of uh, was such an important play for me for a number of reasons, mainly because um, when I was 13 years old, um, I used to keep various things underneath my bed at home. Now, certain teenage boys might keep certain things under their bed. Um, I kept uh, gay plays. I kept plays like Bent by Martin Sherman and The Normal Heart by uh, Larry Kramer and Bill Hoffman's As Is, um, Endless Pieces by Noel Coward and Oscar Wilde. And, and I found that uh, it was plays that sort of helped me find myself as a gay man. Um, just because I wasn't represented on television and I wasn't represented in any way, certainly um, in the sort of mainstream. And indeed, when there were kind of gay characters, when I would see them, they would either be, you know, victims or comedy characters. So I learned an awful lot. Um, uh, I learned an awful lot from, from these extraordinary plays, these, these amazing plays. And anyway, years later, um, sorry, one of those plays was Bent. Bent is still on my uh, that bookshelf, which is opposite me at the moment. And um, uh, I read this play, Bent, and uh, that night I crawled out of bed. Um, I woke my mum up and presented her with a letter and told her I was gay. So, you know, gay plays have been extremely influential in my life. And indeed, I mentioned As Is by Bill Hoffman. Uh, I think I used uh, one of Saul's speeches to get into drama school, I think, back in the day. And then whilst directing uh, As Is, very much the first commercial AIDS play, arguably, uh, after doing that, I would then discover that I was HIV positive afterwards. So um, LGBTQ plus pieces are vital um, because in my opinion, um, they can change the world or more importantly, they can change individuals' lives. Right, I can see people are writing things. Simon Jenner says to me, don't say that, we'll start throwing them at you. One comrade <clears throat> started asking a lighting designer to get stuck in on his play. And I'll start off if you're not careful. Seriously, I'm going to listen in and start on questions. Uh, okay, well, Simon, throw me a question. Uh, you never saw Bent, but you'd really love to. Um, yeah, I did it twice, actually. I, when I did it at the Landor, it did so well. I'm blowing my own tiny, tiny plastic trumpet there. Um, but then uh, the Tabard Theatre um, in Chiswick picked it up and I ended up doing the, the production twice. Um, and then later, uh, Martin had a wonderful play called Passing By, which do you know what? I think we even spoke to the King's Head about doing it there for some, re for some reason that didn't happen. But um, we did Passing By at the Finborough Theatre, which is very much sort of, I, I always think of it as Martin's lost play. 
um, which is this wonderful story about two um, two gay men who are uh, they contract <clears throat> uh, hepatitis, and uh, they are sort of bed bound in this apartment together, and it's about their lives coming together, what they share in their illness, and then how each character needs to go their separate way. It is one of Martin's most beautiful plays. It's so delicate. And I was very fortunate to do it um, at the Fimbra Theatre with uh, Stevie Webb and Alex Felton. And then uh, the play did, well, did very, very well. And then that transferred. And that went to the Tristan Bates Theatre uh, with James Cartwright, son of the great Jim Cartwright, uh, and Rick McCarran as well. And they were marvellous. Uh, so yes, uh, Martin's plays are very. Maybe we should. Maybe that's what we should do. The King's Head. Come up with the wonderful Martin Sherman play. Yes, let's do that. Um, Fimbra is a great space. Uh, do you know what I was saying um, the other day? Uh, I, I was doing an interview for Times Radio, and they were asking me about you know what to expect from theatre. And um, I do have a bit of a fear that the commercial theatre will, because of financial reasons, will be a little bit. I don't want to say stale, but I don't know how you know exciting artistically um, the West End is going to be at the moment. So I was saying on um, on Times Radio, I really hope that when theatres can reopen, you know, that we can get a real surge back into into fringe theatre, especially at places like the King's Head, just because a no one's got any money and tickets at the King's Head are always reasonably priced. Um, but also, you know, we're dealing with really big issues at the moment. We're dealing with, you know, the fact that the planet is sort of trying to kill us all at the moment, either through global warming or global warming or viruses. And so I suspect the um, the playwrights that, that, that are so inspired by life at the moment will come up through the fringe yet again. Uh, and I really, really hope that, that the fringe can have a whole new lease of life because of, of um, the artistic programming that will go on there. That's my hope, anyway. Might not be the case, but it tends to be. Fringe tends to thrive after horrendous events. Yes, wrote a short take on Taste of Honey, set in 1904, where both... Ah. Oh. Yes, absolutely. Um, okay, any questions? Any questions? I feel like I'm just picking stuff out of my head. Give me something nice and specific. Um, it can be about being an artistic director, it can be about being a director, it can be about being an HIV campaigner, uh, it can be, um, it can be uh, what my recommended recipes are that I've discovered through lockdown. I honestly don't mind. Now the planet is trying to kill certain far-right leaders and missing. Well, I, in the spirit of being the kind person that I try to be, I, I, I I do not wish death on anybody. Um, any other questions? Let me have a little look at this document, see if I'm going to be guided. What type of work are you passionate or interested in? Ah, that's a good question. Um, to be honest with you, new work mainly now. Um, certainly when I started, uh, I definitely did a lot of sort of classics and as a lot of directors do when they're cutting their teeth, but the thrill for me is is coming from a um, is, is finding a writer and presenting their work for the first time and and that wonderful messy and exciting you know uh, first production that you create uh, that's always wonderful um, and I suppose uh, I, as a gay man legacy is quite important to me you know I um, I don't have a particular love of children so I, I guess that when I go I go but um, I would like to. I would like to think that I would leave a legacy of doing, you know, lots of original work that then can be revived in, in later years. Um, I'm very passionate about uh, the representation of uh, people from a social and ethnic minority background. That's that's really important to me. Um, and that's and it's very interesting. The industry is going through really interesting. Sort of people are really starting to get that, which is great. Uh, there, there are some places that I think are sometimes doing it to appear. Uh, in a certain way, which which can be a little worrying, and it's you can often work that out by the type of programming they're doing and then the the artists they're putting in it. Um, but it's something I've done for for many many years. Um, I have a very close um, connection with a lot of members of the um, British uh, Southeast uh, and East Asian uh, community, doing you know plays by David Henry Wong and 
In fact, I've organised protests for the fair representation of, um, of East Asians in, in theatre. Uh, indeed, I had to organise a protest against the, uh, the print room um, when they were doing a, a play um, set in ancient China, which they decided to do um, with an entirely Caucasian cast, which was unbelievable in this day and age. So, uh, yes, I'm very passionate about uh, that and collaborating with artists. I love musical theatre. That is another thing that I'm very much associated with, whether that was directing um, Dessa Rose with Cynthia Rivo to doing endless European premieres of things like Rooms of Rock Romance with, with Cassidy Jensen and Alexis Gerard to The Thing About Men, um, The Hired Man uh, by Howard Goodall. Uh, I reworked uh, Howard Goodall and Nick Stimson's um, A Winter's Tale, which was lovely. Uh, I, I'm very passionate about new British musical theatre. Uh, as much as I've done, you know, plenty of pieces by American composers, there's just something wonderful and actually quite vital about doing British new musical theatre. Um, otherwise, we'll just end up doing the same old tired stuff time and time and time again. OK, does the King's Head Commission need work? Does the King's Head Commission need work? I don't know what that means. Does the King's Head Commission need work? Uh... I don't know what that means. I'm really sorry. I might just be a little bit slow. Um, if you directed Angels in America and you had a free hand, would you think editing it would help? <gasps> How funny you mentioned Angels in America. Okay. I don't like the play. I'm so sorry. It's just a play that I've um, I've never liked it. Uh, and I don't want to, again, I, I, I feel in, in this day and age, um, speaking ill of anybody in this industry is, is not great but it's just it's just not a play that I connect with and you would think by the subject matter I would um, but I just don't I, I, I it doesn't excite me as, as a play so editing yes I, I would suggest um, another play is probably if, if I was given the opportunity to do um, Angels in America. The Normal Heart on the other hand is a completely different matter. There are ways we can recover in sports stories LG. Yeah, absolutely. Do you know what, Simon? That's a really, really great point. Uh, LGBTQ plus uh, refugee stories. I, I, I would love someone to write something great. In fact, if somebody has and I don't know it, please send it to me. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and I also think, you know, we we can be very sort of Western focused when it comes to LGBTQ plus um, a perception of, of LGBTQ plus rights and actually you know there are even states in America you know where it, it's almost impossible to be gay that there is th there's an awful lot of places in this in this often wonderful but equally dark world where I think we should really be looking at um, at stories that need to be told about LGBTQ plus people that aren't just you know young pretty things living in London you know, so uh, yeah, I, I would be, I would love to see more LGBTQ plus stories uh, in places other than set in London. My partner, a director, was just fuming, saying this could be great at half. <laughs> well, you know, everyone's got their tastes. Um, I think what's really important at the moment is, you know, just keeping the passion going during this impossible year. Um, so I really hope that all of us as artists, like, I hope we've all got a piece, you know, in our minds that we can concentrate on trying to do or create or, or go and see or support. Just just having something in our minds that we we want to be doing when we come out of this. Because I think it's very easy for us to feel so um, destroyed by this 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 pandemic that it would be very easy. Um, you know, to, to just want to stay in bed all day. Crikey, I've had days like that. Um, but yeah, I, th have a good think about what the next three projects are you want to work on, or the next three directors you want to work with, or um, just just make sure you're still practicing your craft in some way, you know, and use this time to reflect, definitely. Time for some of us writers to get searching ear access. Thanks, so it's difficult to get access. Campaign groups are best for this. Um, Oh, lovely. Oh, so the King's Heads just said um, that they have a biannual uh, playwriting award where we stage the winning production. There's also our Playmill Festival every summer that is entirely new work. Well, Charlie, get me signed up. I, I would love to help you guys with that in some way. Um, 
But that's really, really exciting. So any playwrights, please, please, please check out. Uh, and how amazing you, you would get the winning production gets a, the winning play gets a production. That is extraordinary. What an amazing investment from the King's Head. Well done, guys. That's really cool. Amazing. Um, yeah. Any questions? <laughs> My poor tea is getting cold. has any questions oh this is something um i'm i uh, hope charlie doesn't mind um so i imagine like everybody watching this um what with not being able to work since uh, february i think um i've been uh <laughs> quite hysterically but but rather brilliantly I, I was having a real problem with um finding purpose um you know not having that you know those production meetings with producers and seeing actors and, and all the my normal bits and pieces. Anyway, uh, I didn't really know what to do with myself. And then I, like a child really, sat down with my iPad and I, um, I haven't drawn for years and years and years and years. And um, I started creating artworks. Uh, it all started, there was, the first piece was uh, from my favorite film I'm a big uh, science, I'm a huge science fiction fan. Uh, and my favorite film is, a, is an old film called Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And um, there's a wonderful moment between two characters where they're separated by a, a big perspex piece of glass as one of the characters sadly dies. Sorry, spoiler alert, but it was made in the 80s. If you haven't seen it now, that's your problem. And um, anyway, so I created this sort of geometric artwork of that moment, just um, which was how I was feeling, just really separated from everything. And when I posted it, lots of people started to say, uh, can I get a copy of this? Uh, and I contacted my, my normal printers I would use for productions that make programs and posters and whatever. And uh, so I had 10 made. And I said, okay, 10 of these prints are available and they all sold. Suddenly making my mortgage feel less painful um, that was coming up. And um, so I've spent months and months and months creating lots of different um, artworks basically to help a help me pay the bills um but also it's given me a new sense of purpose so every morning i get up i see what orders have come in um you know and i pop them all in their special tubes and they get their certificates of authenticity and sign them and uh you know pop to the post office make sure they're sent and it's given me a new sort of um a little side business in some respect but a really happy one um and uh, i have created some pieces inspired by theater so please check them out um uh, I've done one called Actopoly, which is a Monopoly board, which has the king's head on. The king's head is on my Actopoly piece, I've just remembered. Um, so yes, uh, it's, it's, it's the Monopoly board, with the font block, obviously, because uh, um, copyright. Uh, but it's an Actopoly board, and it's the journey of an actor through. So you've got things like Universal Credit on there, you've got Open Dance Call on there, um, you've got uh, Spotlight fees and things there. So, so please do check it out, and if you've enjoyed this, please buy one so I can eat this week. Um, and that's at uh, andrewkeats.co.uk forward slash shop. Okay, Andrew, you'll know of the work of e.g. places like London Playwrights Workshop. Okay, so the play can't put, why does it be incredible? Now directors and actors are involved in it. Fantastic. I have done it, King's Herd. We'll be sending them in. Thanks again. Do you know of the work of Sean Byrne? He had plays produced about gay identity and sexuality. The next one will be Black and Collector of Tears. Coming around to some small spaces, really worth looking at. Simon, I don't. There's some great names there. I love the idea of the, the next one will be Black. That's a fabulous title. Uh, I don't know, but I, I would love to have a little look at it. Um, and that's quite unusual. Usually any old, any gay player I tend to know, so I do not know Sean Byrne's work, and I will absolutely check it out after this stream. Uh, okay, everybody, I think we've got about five minutes left of the session, so uh, please do throw in any questions. I now kind of understand how those poor um, <laughs> news anchors during the presidential election felt, where they just used to have to, you know, stare at a camera and talk constantly and fill time waiting for things to come in. I know exactly how they feel now. Oh, thank you. And the King's Head has just shared um, a link to all my, my artwork pieces there. Uh, yeah, and how, I'm so happy that I remembered to put um, King's Head on there. Any other questions for the last five minutes? Are you aware of, tran of trans work? Katie, that is such a great question. I'm, ah, 
Longer question. Apologies, I didn't use my mouse. Are you of trans work out there or groups supporting trans work? I'm not the guy to do it, is what I would say. I would absolutely like to see more trans work, and indeed I'm always very happy um, to give work to trans actors, creatives, etc. I am yet to have read anything yet that is authentically by a trans person. I have been sent things that have, you know, people have written uh, which features a trans character, but I've never felt um, satisfied by it. I've never felt that it's it's authentic. Um, and there are some really major issues uh, affecting the trans community that uh, I would absolutely love to see. I would love to see more productions um, that, that cover the, the plights of, of being trans and indeed the joys of being trans. Um, I feel like there is a tsunami of change happening there. Um, you know, with Star Trek, um, funny enough, I mentioned Star Trek earlier. Um, I mean, Star Trek, for example, is just, you know, put its first, um, uh, it's, it's first trans uh, actor such character into the series, which is marvellous. I mean, that's going to be seen by millions of people. You know, we've, we've, we've now got actors who are feeling safe enough to, to speak about their trans status, and I think that's, that's fabulous. Um, I want to see more. I'm just not the guy to do it. And that isn't because I don't want to do it. I just don't think it's right. Um, you know, and, and I'm not saying you have to be something to... to, to to tell a story, um, I don't know. Maybe if maybe if a um, if a trans playwright sent me something that I that I loved, and they want and they wanted me to direct it, I, I would feel very uncomfortable, sort of taking a trans story and and and, and making it mine. There, there would have to be, you know, there'd have to be some kind of collaboration there. there would, you know, we'd have to be co-directors on it, I think, in some way, or or they would have to love the way that I work enough that they would feel safe and trusting in me to look after the production itself, but in, in some kind of collaboration to make sure, because, you know, I'm, 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 I am not trans. Um, I can ask questions, but I would want to make sure I had someone by my side who had answers to inspire the work and make sure it was authentic. So yeah, I love that you've asked about trans work because uh, we just don't talk about it enough. I'll have to get into writing then. Yes, Katie, get into writing. And we've just discovered all these lovely new play. Yes, please, 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 please get into writing and send it to me. You know, uh, who knows? Maybe this is the spark of a new idea. Um, lovely. He's published as a poet in June. I was lovely. All right, Simon, I will check him out. Um, okay, I've only got a couple of minutes left. Any a couple of minutes left? Any last few bits and pieces before I um go and do some washing up, which I need to do, which I've left since last night. I'm going to check my sheet just to make sure I've been really good and done everything Charlie's asked me to do. Ah, oh, there we go. I'm glad I checked. Any last questions before I disappear into the ether? Okay, well, I've got uh, a couple of minutes left. Um, so, uh, oh, have you thought of historical plays that have been buried? There's quite a few out there. Yeah, absolutely. It's funny you say that, actually. Um, uh, yes, is the answer to that question. Um, there are a couple of historical plays, um, and indeed, that I have, um, I have a brain and a database of plays in my head, which any producer um, would uh, would like to hear. In fact, that tends to be why I have various producers I work with, because they go, "I need a play that does this." And nine times out of ten, I I know one. Um, there is one particularly brilliant lost play, um, which a producer will have to come to me and talk to me about if they would like to do it. Uh, but again, as a director, I'm not going to say, oh, there's this play, this play, this play, because um, I've done that before, and then the plays have been put on, and then I've been horribly disappointed that I <laughs> haven't worked doing them. So, um, yes. Um, okay, I'm going to call it to an end. Um, if anybody, uh, if my ramblings today were, were <laughs> any use whatsoever, um, you can follow me on Twitter. I am uh, at Andrew Keats on Twitter. Uh, I'm Mr. Andrew Keats on uh, Instagram. Um, and uh, my website, again, please, please, please check out these artworks. It'd be lovely to have a couple of orders coming in, um, uh, which is andrewkeats.co.uk forward slash shop. Um, and you can also find out all about my work there. So um, if you want to look at production images from Bents, which I mentioned earlier, or as is, um, all of that stuff is on my website. So please, please check it out. Um, 
And also, uh, just to remind you, as I jump to my script, a reminder that hashtag, I said hashtag then, that's my East End mother coming out. Uh, a reminder that hashtag KHT online is every Thursday at one o'clock live on Facebook. Um, and you can watch previous hashtag KHT online sessions on the KHT blog and YouTube channel. So check them out. I hope I've been a happy distraction during these <laughs> miserable days. Um, and thank you once again to the King's Head uh, for having me. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll, we will get through this and I can't wait uh, to come back to the King's Head as soon as possible. It's a very special place. Thank you very much and a Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, how do I turn this thing off? <laughs>